What's up everyone, Rob here from Mishimoto. If you haven't already, be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive Ford Mustang content. Today we're going to install our direct fit oil cooler on your 2015 Plus Mustang GT. Let's get started. Tools recommended for installation are 14 millimeter Allen key, 5.5, 7, 8, 10, and 12 millimeter sockets, quarter inch drive ratchet and extension, 27 millimeter socket, one inch socket, half inch drive ratchet, a torque wrench, dash 10 AN wrench, a strap wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, flathead screwdriver, panel tool, pick tool, channel lock pliers, and pop clip pliers. Installation time is about three hours. Installation difficulty is a four out of five. Caution, never work on the cooling system when it's hot. The coolant temperature inside the radiator can be considerably higher than boiling and the system may be under pressure. Opening a cooling system that is hot or under pressure can cause serious injury. Always wait until the system has cooled completely before servicing it in any way. Installing an oil cooler adds additional maintenance to vehicle ownership. All oil line connections should be checked regularly for leaks and retorqued. The oil filter center bolt adapter must be retorqued every time the oil filter is removed. Set the vehicle on an automotive lift or raise it with a jack and place it securely on jack stands. Refer to the owner's manual for safe lifting points if you are unsure. Remove the six pop clips that secure the front splash panel to the underside of the vehicle. Remove the 16 screws that secure the front splash panel. Then slide the splash panel toward the rear of the vehicle to remove it. Remove the screws that secure the rear splash panel to the vehicle. Then remove the splash panel from the vehicle. Locate the radiator drain on the passenger side of the vehicle. You can drain the radiator with a stock drain hose, but we found that it made quite a mess, so we installed a longer hose. Place a drain bucket under the hose and loosen the drain plug until coolant flows freely from the drain. Remove the pressure cap from the expansion tank to accelerate the draining process. Reach up behind the bumper to disconnect the electrical harness from the fog light assemblies on both sides of the vehicle. There are a total of six connectors that need to be separated. Remove the pop clips that secure the fender liners to the front bumper. There are three pop clips on each side. Remove the pop clips that secure the air diversion panel to the upper radiator support. Then remove the air diversion panel. Remove the screws that secure the top edge of the bumper. Remove the small screws that secure the top of the bumper located just inboard of the headlight assemblies underneath the hood seal. Pull outward on the bumper where it meets the fender to release it from the vehicle. Do this on both sides. The top edge of the bumper is held on by several plastic studs. Lift the top edge of the bumper to release it from the vehicle, then remove the bumper by sliding it forward. Loosen the worm gear clamp that secures the intake pipe to the airbox and separate the hose from the airbox. Disconnect the two hoses from the intake pipe. To release a hose, depress the lock tab and pull it off. Remove the last hose from the intake pipe by sliding the lock tab down the slot and pulling it off the port. Remove the engine cover by lifting it directly upward. Loosen the worm gear clamps that secure the intake pipe to the throttle body, then remove the intake pipe. Remove the bolt that secures the airbox to the vehicle located along the driver's side fender. 
Disconnect the mass airflow sensor and move the harness out of the way. Then remove the airbox from the vehicle by lifting it upward. To release the connector, slide the red lock tab away from the connector, then depress the black tab and pull the connector apart. Compress the clamp that secures the lower radiator hose to the water outlet and slide the clamp down the hose. Then remove the hose from the water outlet. Our vehicle had a worm gear clamp securing this connection, but yours will likely have the stock constant tension clamp. Stuff a rag or shop towel into the water outlet to keep coolant from dripping on the drive belt while you work. Compress the clamp that secures the lower radiator hose to the radiator and slide the clamp up the hose. Then remove the hose from the radiator. Our vehicle had a worm gear clamp securing this connection, but yours will likely have the stock constant tension clamp. Release the quick disconnect fittings that secure the coolant bypass hose to the stock oil cooler and remove the hoses from the oil cooler. To do this, squeeze both of the white plastic tabs and pull the hose away from the oil cooler. Have a bucket handy as there will be residual coolant in the oil cooler. Our vehicle had a prototype hose installed, but yours will have the original quick disconnect fittings. Now remove the lower radiator hose from the vehicle. Place a drain pan beneath the oil filter and remove it from the oil cooler. Remove the stock oil cooler center bolt adapter and then remove the oil cooler. Insert a 14 mm Allen key or socket into the center bolt to loosen it. Wipe off the mating surface on the engine where you remove the stock oil cooler with a clean rag. Lubricate the seal on the Mishimoto sandwich plate with clean oil. Insert the provided center bolt adapter through the opposite side of the sandwich plate. Install the sandwich plate to the engine, making sure that the seal is between the engine and the sandwich plate. Orient the adapter so the threaded ports on the sandwich plate face towards the front of the vehicle and torque the center bolt to 30 foot-pounds. Install the provided AN fittings to the sandwich plate and tighten them completely. Remove the tree clips that secure the ducting located just above the crash beam on each side of the radiator. Push downward on the lower air diverter to release the tree clips that secure it. Once the air diverter is loose, push both of the radiator ducts inward and slip the air diverter out to remove it from the vehicle. Locate the Mishimoto air diverter in your kit and remove the gasket from the edge to make installation easier. Push the radiator ducts inward and install the Mishimoto air diverter. Slip the leading edge of the air diverter over the AC condenser, then lift the diverter up and slip the dowels on the diverter into the holes on the radiator support. Now go back and reinstall the gasket to the air diverter. Locate the mounting hardware in your kit. The larger, thicker bolts and flat top spacers will be used to mount the oil cooler. The short bolts and nylock nuts will be used to secure the air diverter to the radiator support. The long bolts and beveled edge spacers will be used to support the outside edge of the diverter. Secure the air diverter to the radiator support by passing the short bolts up through the bottom of the diverter. Thread the nuts on, but do not fully tighten them yet. Install the beveled spacers to the corners of the air diverter and secure them with the long bolts. When installing the beveled spacer, make sure that the beveled edge is on top. Loosely thread the nut into the bolt, then rotate the spacer until it's flush with both the radiator support and the air diverter. Fully tighten all the hardware that secures the air diverter to the radiator support. When properly installed, the air diverter mounting pins will be fully engaged with the radiator support and the gasket on the diverter will be firmly pressed against the radiator. Align the radiator ducts and secure them with the tree clips you removed earlier. Attach the Mishimoto oil cooler to the air diverter. 
Drop one of the large bolts through the slotted hole on the top of the air diverter and install the flat top spacer between the cooler and the air diverter. Do this on both sides. The slotted holes on the air diverter provide adjustability for forced induction setups where an intercooler may get in the way. Snug these bolts, but do not fully tighten them yet. Locate the longer oil line in your kit. Pass the end with the 45 degree fitting around the driver's side of the radiator, underneath the connection for the lower radiator hose. Attach this line to the upper port on the sandwich plate and tighten it completely. Locate the shorter oil line in your kit. Pass the end with the 45 degree fitting alongside the line you just installed. Attach this line to the lower port on the sandwich plate and tighten it completely. Lead the longer oil line up behind the crash beam and install the 180 degree fitting on the passenger side of the oil cooler. Position the oil line so it runs along the upper edge of the oil cooler and then tighten the fitting. Install the 90 degree fitting to the driver's side of the oil cooler and tighten it completely. Check the routing of the oil lines to make sure they are clear of the drive belt and stabilizer bar. If you need to adjust for fitment issues, simply turn the sandwich plate until proper fitment is achieved. Be sure to retorque the center bolt to 30 foot-pounds when you are finished. Adjust the fitment of the oil cooler to fit your needs, then tighten the bolts that secure it. Lubricate the oil filter gasket with fresh engine oil and install it on the sandwich plate. Locate the new radiator hose in your kit. This hose will replace the one you removed earlier. Slip one of the provided hose clamps over each end of the hose and install the hose to the vehicle. Then tighten the clamps that secure it. Install the air box. Tilt the air box as you lower it into place to clear the air inlet duct and align the pegs on the air box with the hole in the fender. Then secure the air box with the original hardware. Connect the electrical harness to the mass airflow sensor and secure the connector with the red locking tab. Install the intake pipe to the throttle body and the air box. Connect the three hoses to the intake pipe. Simply push them on until they lock. Then secure the intake pipe with the worm gear clamps. Start the engine and allow it to idle for about 10 seconds. Shut off the engine and check the oil level. Top it off with Ford approved engine oil. Fill the cooling system with pre-mixed Ford approved coolant through the reservoir filler neck. Start the engine and allow it to idle with the cap off. Turn the heater valve on the vehicle's HVAC unit to full hot and put the fan on low. Inspect all the oil lines and sandwich plate connections for leaks while the engine warms up to operating temperature. If oil is leaking from any of the connections, shut the engine off. Loosen the leaking connection and retorque it. Monitor the engine temperature and coolant level in the reservoir. Add coolant as needed to maintain proper level in the reservoir and check your connections for leaks. If the vehicle begins to overheat or coolant starts to overflow from the reservoir, Shut the engine off and allow it to cool before continuing. Once the vehicle is fully warmed up, allow the vehicle to cool off completely and then top off the coolant and oil. Coolant levels should be checked once more after putting in some miles. Remember that the cooling system should never be opened when the engine is hot. Reinstall the front bumper. Slide the bumper over the nose of the vehicle and then lift the upper edge to slip the plastic studs into the holes on the bumper. Align the edge of the bumper with the edge of the fender and press the bumper in until it locks. Install the screws that secure the upper corners of the bumper just in board of the headlights. Install the screws that secure the upper edge of the bumper. Install the upper air diversion panel and secure it with the original hardware. Secure both of the fender liners to the front bumper with the original hardware. 
reach up behind the bumper and reconnect the wiring harness to the fog light assemblies on both sides of the vehicle. There are six connectors in total. Install the rear splash panel and secure it with the original hardware. Slip the forward splash panel up behind the front bumper and secure it with the original hardware. Now that you have the oil cooler installed, make sure that the coolant has been properly bled and the oil has been topped off. Then it's time to take your Mustang out for a test drive and double check your fittings for any leaks. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you head out.